However full of fun, my time at Kat's cousins would ultimately be short-lived. Luckily though, she was also into girls, so at least I was able to keep it in Kat's family while searching for a new place to live. Her cousin and I were always on and off friends, and have since shared many sexual encounters. She was also a Sagittarian, and we all know how I feel about that. And that was about it. I found a place in the next village over, in Middletown, in a fairly decent apartment. Pike kept his word and helped me move in. It was the first time I'd ever moved into a place all by my lonesome, but I enjoyed the privacy and my ability to come and go as I pleased. I was finally left to my own devices, which, with what I was planning to do, was the best thing for me. Now comes a time of personal growth that I had been longing for so badly, leaving but one final obstacle to overcome work. I know that when I finally returned, people did seem a little friendlier towards me, and no one had the gall to ask me about the incident. Even my two closest friends in the company wouldn't say much about it. Perhaps everyone was finally done trespassing into my life. I was scheduled for my second photo shoot with a guy named Mike on August 25th. I couldn't have been back from the mental home for more than a few days before picking right back up where I left off. At least a shoot was scheduled at night this time, so I wouldn't have to take another day off of work so soon after my return. I was really beginning to wonder just how much time I had left before they told me to go fuck myself. My job had put up with so much of my shit, I couldn't have been that good to keep around. And if it wasn't the company firing me that I was worried about, it was my own doings that were going to get me fired. Time ticks but sometimes not fast enough. Although I still had a ways to go before realizing this fact, contrary to the way I believed things should go during a shoot, most legit modeling work, as I'd soon learn, is actually done under a TFP agreement, or time for prints, meaning there's rarely any money exchange nor any sexual flavors to be expected. In a professional environment, even if the shoot is nude, it still remains as an occurrence most individuals take seriously. The reason for TFP is to build portfolios, giving both the model and the photographer a way to show off the work they're capable of. My time with Mike taught me to make use of my environment. I wanted good pictures just as much as he did, if not more. And I wouldn't have been doing this if all I had to do was strip and let some dirty old guy take pictures of himself fucking me. Not that Mike was a dirty old man, I'm just saying. It was a somewhat decent quality hotel, no jacuzzi or anything fancy, just a bed and some walls. However, on those walls, I found a mirror, and that is when the gears started turning. I loved mirrors! This was going to be my angle. Basically, I was just looking for something that I could find interest in so that the photos didn't appear to have been forced. I always hate it when someone tells me to smile for the camera. The thought of it alone makes me cringe as it will always look fake. That's why there are so few pictures of me smiling. No one ever really captured the moment. But at the same time, real smiles are also hard to capture. So with Mike, in trying to avoid one of those awkward moments, I scanned the room for something that would allow me to appear engrossed and overall forget that the camera was even there. I had just stumbled upon one of the most basic secrets of taking a good picture. It couldn't have worked out any better. 
After the shoot, Mike even said that he hadn't expected such results. In all seriousness, I think he assumed that I was just going to be a little slut, strip for the camera, collect my cash, and then jet. After all, he did find me through Sexy Jobs, which is a site dedicated to making connections between those involved in the more smutty aspects of the industry. But what I had done was take him out of the picture entirely. I also learned that my reflection in the mirror often gave a completely different look than as if the camera was pointed directly at my face. In fact, I was learning that all of my pictures would often come out very differently depending on the photographer, some photos showing no signs of similarity whatsoever, as if two separate people had been photographed. This was largely based on the one taking the picture, as he is only capturing what he is seeing. It's all about perception, and in this case, his perception. I still had a lot of mental processing to do before I could fully understand how to manipulate this information, but for the few hundred bucks I was making to get dinner and learn these valuable facts, it was all well worth it. Furthermore, I was quickly beginning to realize that I needed a nicer set of boobs, as I was practically flat. The industry adamantly told me to leave my tits alone. It gave me a younger look, they said, and for the time being, they would have their way, as I was still hurting financially from all the other shit. All told, the night went as per expected. I was catching on and the results even helped bring about a new level of clientele. I got more pictures from my collection and even had a little fun in the end. But the evening was still far from over.